but they were like, do not donate your time. We don't want your, we don't want you to donate time unless we ask for you. And we don't want you to donate stuff to other people. You need to just donate money and stuff to us and get your instructions from us and listen to us. What? And then you say, they said yesterday, we don't go into areas that the roads are not easily accessible. What? You are the debt disaster relief people. Like that is your job to go into the areas that are hit by disaster. In the aftermath of Hurricane Eileen, small North Carolina mountain towns found themselves isolated, roads washed away, power knocked out, and supplies dwindling. Residents desperate for help waited for rescue. If you have ever stepped foot in these Appalachian mountains and hiked them, we need you here. We need foot. We need people on foot. If you have ever hiked the Rocky Mountains, get here. We need you. We need people experiencing hiking. There's only a few ways to these people. It is through foot, horseback, or helicopter. But help never came for a lot of people. Hours turned into days, days turned into a week, and still no local, state, or federal aid for thousands of people in the area. Along with that, you had talk about FEMA being broke. That started to spread around as it was announced the agency was low on funds. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have, we are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds, FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. American citizens grew angry, finding out nearly $1.5 billion of FEMA money was allocated to illegal immigrants, while VP Kamala Harris said residents impacted by Helene could apply for up to $750 in aid. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met. I'm telling y'all, that Biden-Harris administration, they ain't worth a damn half a penny. Many residents desperate for help realized they had been forgotten. Meanwhile, you had other citizens trying to help those trapped, but the help was being turned away by local, state, and federal officials. First of all, some really dumb rules have been implemented, y'all. One of our big shelters and distribution centers, the health department told the refugees, those that are stranded, who've lost everything, that they could not use the shelter showers without flip-flops. Dumbest thing I have ever heard, these people have lost everything and you won't let them take a hot shower without flip-flops? Huh, well, when I got that call, Thank you, friends, and thank you to Larry and Concord who hooked us up at the nail supply place because we sent 18,000 pairs of flip-flops up to the shelter this morning where one of my girlfriends took a trailer up so people can take a shower. Those are the kind of rules that don't help in a time of absolute survival disaster. My thing is, why didn't FEMA provide the operators of these portable showers with shower shoes? How can you expect people that just lost everything to have some shoes? That's number one. Number two is, if you're reading about FEMA online and wondering if they're really a pain in the tail, I can confirm it is true. I tried to send in a pallet of chainsaws two days ago and we had to divert it somewhere away from FEMA because they wanted to confiscate. FEMA, those ain't your chainsaws. Our mountain people are much better with them than y'all are, although I'm sure there's some very fine people that work for FEMA. I'm talking about the organization. but. Those saws need to be in the hands of the guys on ATVs down in the holler and up on these trees where there are blocked roads where we can get access to our neighbors who are still stranded. This is not a one-time little five-minute storm. There are people that we have not gotten to yet, and we want to get to them. That's why those chainsaws are up there. So, fine, we're going to go around you, FEMA, and don't try to get in the way of North Carolina mountain people And when we are trying to take care of each other. You should also know I had a shipment trying to go in last night that got stopped because somebody wanted to inventory it. So we diverted that one elsewhere to get it into the hands of an apartment complex of seniors that had been neglected. So thank you to the friend of mine who alerted me to that complex and to the other friend who took this load up. And by the way, got to spend the night at the apartment of somebody who was just willing to help out. The biggest thing you have to know here is that neighbors are looking after neighbors and when FEMA's in the way, 
don't think you're going to stop us because that's basically like a Satan roadblock and God will find a way because God always wins. Have you seen the story about the lady that was literally calling from a gas station for the FEMA money, the poultry $750 for the American citizens, they get $750, you know, thanks FEMA. But now they can't even get that. People are getting denied left and right. And the guy was speaking to her on the phone. He was like, well, if there's nothing I can do. It's what our, it's our computer. And if our computer says no, then, you know, that's, there's, it's out of my hands. And she's literally going, I'm at a gas station. My house is gone. My mom and my son are like somewhere at a, at a, a center where there's help. We have no money, no gas, or no food. He's like, sorry, we can only give out money to, um, you know, your house if you, if your insurance is not paying for it. Whatever your insurance isn't paying for, that's what we're going to give money for and for emergencies. And she goes, what do you mean an emergency? This is an emergency. I'm literally at a gas station. I have hardly no gas in my car. My parent, my mom and my son have no food. FEMA's doing this left and right, reje rejecting applications for the little 750 that was going to help them. It's just unbelievable, you guys. I am so sad and stressed for everyone. I'm so mad and furious. And that's another thing. I'm hearing a bunch of stories of hurricane victims being rejected by FEMA. Remember, that $750 isn't automatically given out. You have to apply for it. The algorithm, the computer will tell you yes or no. Then when people are getting these rejections, they're calling FEMA customer service representatives and they're up there telling them there's nothing they can do. Yeah, they're being told to tell them if the computer said no, that's just what it is. And then they're saying they're only helping folks in emergency situations. Did they change the definition of emergency? You have these folks that just lost everything they own, but somehow it's not an emergency? Now, if they showed up on the other side of the border as migrants, maybe FEMA would consider that an emergency, you know, and save those people. But saving your own citizens, that's not a priority at all? Well, you're going to have to just excuse my appearance because we have no power. We have no running water, but I'm just so pissed off that I've got to make this clear. We got a notification from TEMA. I'm guessing that's FEMA for Tennessee. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's supposed to be the disaster relief people, but they were like, do not donate your time. We don't want your, we don't want you to donate time unless we ask for you. And we don't want you to donate stuff to other people. You need to just donate money and stuff to us and get your instructions from us and listen to us. What? And then you say, they said yesterday, we don't go into areas that the roads are not easily accessible. What? You are the dead disaster relief people. Like that is your job to go into the areas that are hit by disaster and provide relief. Not to just go to the easy area and sit and wait for the people that are in the disaster area to be able to come to you. Let's get this straight. So the rescue team said they can't go and rescue anybody trapped where roads are not easily accessible. Bear in mind, you had a bunch of roads and bridges wiped away. They have to move trees out the way to get through. And a lot of areas you can only access through helicopters but they're telling citizens not to help other citizens, even though they're not willing to help them when that's their job to do so. We're talking about these so-called rescue teams. These officials are telling people, if you have a helicopter, don't come. If you have food and supplies, don't come. Just leave everybody trapped and send them the money, even though they're not helping. The roads that we do have were cleared by the locals and you have to have trucks and stuff to be able to get through there. Like, it's just beyond me. So um, we're wondering, we just asked, when do you guys go door to door? He was telling that... After know. we get the general stuff done, you know, we got to hit the mass people first, wherever the mass people are. So the mass people are here. Let's get them into the system as quickly as possible. Once we get the masses done, then we start going door to door. Okay. How, I mean, how, how do people know you're here? 
Where did we just got here? Oh, um, you just got here? Uh, we were here yesterday. Yeah. And today's our first day uh, okay. with this unit. Yeah. And then tomorrow we're going to move the unit up by the car wash. Oh. Uh, so yesterday we couldn't do anything besides give them the information yeah. because we didn't have any Wi-Fi. Right. I, I will say, and this is just someone who's, we got lucky enough, Glenn actually spotted it before I did, but I think even having this vehicle more towards the front of the road where people even know that it exists, yeah. where for visibility with people coming by might actually... Yeah, we were, in a, we were in a van with eight people. I was the only one that saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, that's what we're going to do. That's Good. what we got to do. We just needed a temporary spot to turn around and get things up and running. Yeah, and uh, the guy that's running this facility here, I spoke with the manager here. He said this would be a good spot. The guy that's running the parking lot, who's a different guy, I didn't know that. He said so the car wash would be better. And I was like, boy, that's really smart. Yeah. Okay, so good. that's where we're going to be set up tomorrow. And you have us all messed up. If you think you're going to come here and bark orders at us, and then expect the people just to give you the money and us trust that you're going to try to take care of us when you not you don't go into areas that are not easily accessible. What? Like, this is Cock County, girl. So, donate to our local churches because they will make sure that the people that, that are need it will get it. And you need to just, while we appreciate... What help you're trying to provide, I don't think you understood the assignment because it's not to just go to one location in hopes that the people in the disaster area can make it to you. So just sit back and watch and we'll show you how it's done, but we're not going to stop. So please and thank you. This is America. How is this even going on? They're treating foreign refugees and illegals better than their own citizens trapped in mountains. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Let me know what you think about this below. Special thank you to Roland C. I appreciate you Roland for all of your support as well as Randy and Mike G. If you want to show your support for the channel too, you have to use PayPal for now. The link is below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.